Hello, um, thank you for joining. Um, we're going to be crocheting part one of Flick today. Um, so this is just going to be his head that we'll be focusing on today. Um, feel free to say hi in the chat. Um, I'll uh, try to answer any questions as we kind of go along. Um, let me know if my audio is working. Um, uh, this is my first time doing a YouTube live, so uh, please let me know if something's not working out. Um, we're just going to start. So I'm going to put Flick off to the side, and then we're going to start crocheting the head. Actually, we're going to start on the eyelids, just because we'll be attaching that to the head first. There's a bit of an echo. Let's see if I can fix that. Uh, okay, let's see if that works better. Cool. So for the eyelid, we're just going to make a magic ring, but we're only going to put four stitches in there. And then we're actually going to work it flat. So we'll chain one. And then we're just going to turn it and then increase in each stitch. If I'm going too fast, let me know. Or if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to feel free to ask. Okay, so we got one eyelid down. I'm just gonna make one more.
Oh, I totally forgot. Um, I'm going to be giving away a flick pattern in this live stream. Um, I'm going to keep track of everyone who's watching. Just let me grab a piece of paper. Cool. So, if you would like to be entered in for the draw, just say hi in the chat and I'll uh, keep track of your names. So we've got Cherry Sweet. Thank you for joining. So, I'm going to cut these out into little strips and then we'll do just a random draw in a bit. We've got Heather Butter. Mel Bell. Cool. And if you're watching uh, and I haven't written down your name, please just say hi in the chat and I'll jot you down into the list. And then uh, to answer your question, Cherry Sweet, um, I started crocheting about, uh, I want to say, eight years ago. So I started crocheting when I started uh, teaching, actually. So uh, I teach high school. Um, and it gets a little stressful. So I wanted to pick up crocheting just to do something a little more uh, therapeutic and very different uh, to my uh, regular day job. So I have been crocheting ever since I started teaching. Alex McGoran, I got your name in there. Oh, thank you, Melville. Um, I'm going to put you in the draw anyway. You can choose a different pattern if you end up winning. What am I doing? Oh, so we're starting on the head now, so we'll do a magic ring of six. Oh, too many. Now we'll just do our increase round. Hello, Katie. I'm going to add you to the draw for a free flick pattern. Oh, uh, Magic Circle. You know what? Uh, let's restart this. I know a lot of people have been commenting about the Magic Circle. Um, everyone's got a bit of a different way of doing this. Um, I know a lot of people like to do a huge wraparound. Um, I don't like to waste all the yarn, so what I do is I just uh, clasp my tail and then I just wrap my pointer finger just to make sure I have a little cross, and then I just put my hook in the first loop, and then, uh, yeah, grab the second loop, pull through, and then I can make a little slip knot, and then I've got my magic ring. So I know a few techniques has a bit of a tail, um, so I do that just to kind of mitigate the amount of yarn that I'm wasting. Okay, so I gotta restart. We'll do a magic ring of six. Does everyone else here crochet as well? If you do, uh, tell me your favorite type of hook. Do you like plastic, wood, or metal?
Okay, we've got a wood hook. Uh, I love wood hooks as well. Um, it's my main go-to. I don't mind using metal. Um, it's just sometimes my hands get really sweaty. <laughs> so then the metal, um, I don't know if this happens to you, but uh, sometimes when I'm gripping the handle, the metal makes like a really harsh squeaky noise, which uh, I don't really like all that much. So um, I find with wood, uh, no matter <laughs> how sweaty my hands get, um, I can still crochet comfortably. Yeah, that noise. It's like a, it's like nails on a chalkboard kind of noise to me. And it only happens with metal hooks. What about um? What's what are what's everyone's favorite size of hook? So I know in this pattern. Um, I have suggested a 5mm hook, just because that's what I tend to use a lot. Um, I crochet very tightly, um, so that means I have to um, go up uh, a hook size just to make sure my stitches aren't super tight. So my hooks, uh, I got them from a company called Laurel Hill. Um, they're based in the United States. Uh, I just ordered a set. Um, the wood is really high quality. Um, I really like the shape of it. Uh, it's super comfortable in my hands, especially when I'm crocheting a lot. Um, it doesn't hurt too much after a long crocheting session. Uh, Mel Bell. Um, I have used, uh, I've tried hooks that have that um, ergonomic handle. I just find that they make them really short. So I find um, a lot of the ones that I've tried, they'll end right where my palm is. So it'll sort of dig into my palm, which also doesn't uh, help a lot. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's a lot of problems I have. I have larger hands, uh, so the hook sizes aren't always um, super nice to work with for me. Heather, my favorite type of wool, um, I tend to use um, an acrylic wool blend. Um, so it's, I, uh, acrylic is like kind of a bad word um, when it comes to uh, buying yarn. Uh, but I, I, buy, I buy yarn that has, I think about 70% acrylic and then the rest is uh, some sort of wool mix. Um, I just find that acrylic just has that, um, because I do a lot of amigurumi, I find that uh, acrylic holds uh, its shape a lot better. So I just need that tiny little bit of acrylic uh, just to make sure uh, my stuffies look like what they're intended to. Oh, we have two new joiners. So I'm just going to put your name down and then we'll draw for a free flip pattern in a second here. So we've got Windrose, and we've got Lizzie. Kill Cram. Where am I? Uh, okay, so now we're just going to do some single crochet rounds.
yeah, that's another good thing. Um, because a lot of these are dolls, um, sometimes they do get dirty. So with acrylic, you can easily just toss them in the wash and they'll be, they'll be good to go. Thanks. I do. I do have to work it pretty quickly. Um, it comes with experience, and uh, because I crochet a lot for um, art markets and conventions, so I need to produce a lot of work really fast. So I sort of trained myself to be uh, a, just a quick little factory worker. So these are just the boring single crochet rounds, not even really thinking. Oh yeah, totally. Um, after I finish this piece, I'll show you. Oh, I'll show you what my scissors look like. Uh, they're just in the shape of a. Um, a stork, a crane. One more single crochet round. Yeah, um, these scissors, I've seen them a lot in uh, like a gold plated color. Um, I forget where I got these. I, it must have been while I was on a trip somewhere. Oh, you know what? Um, <laughs> I think it was when I was in London and I lost my crocheting case. Um, I think it must have just been misplaced at a... Airbnb somewhere. So then I had to replenish my entire crochet kit. I think that's where I got these scissors. It happens to me a lot, uh, especially when I'm traveling. I'll just uh, misplace a few things here and there. Because um, especially if I'm flying somewhere, I like to crochet while we're up in the air, just to kind of keep myself uh, busy. And then, you know, I'll, I'll misplace a hook, and just it'll just go missing. It'll just be lost on that plane forever. I do it a lot. Yeah, good scissors um, are key, especially for this. Um, we'll need to cut some felt later, and I find nice, sharp, precise scissors are uh, the best. Oops. Uh, lost count. Oopsies. Oops, uh, let's see. Where did I go wrong? One, two, three, four, five. Five, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. 
What's everybody's current project right now? Oh, it's Hunter. Awesome. Um, sweet. Are you making my Kiro? Um, I have been doing conventions where I sell Amigurumi um, for about three years now. I've done a bunch of local ones, so where I am in Calgary. Um, uh, I went to Vancouver for my last one, um, and uh, I kind of want to branch out a bit more. I want to do the rest of the comic cons in uh, Canada, so Toronto's got a big one, so I want to try that one day. I do like selling at conventions, um, especially just sort of being there and then being around other artists. Um, that's, it's always like a really cool, positive atmosphere. Everyone's supportive. Everyone's so into uh, their everyone else's um, art medium. Oh, Melba, you got lots on the go. Cool, so now we've gotten to our decrease rounds. So uh, I use an invisible decrease, so I'll zoom in on it when I uh, uh, do it. So just gonna single crochet three. Now, everyone's also got their preferred way of decreasing, but I like to use the invisible decrease just because it's, um, uh, it's, it's not that as noticeable as other types of decreases. So all you do is you insert your hook, into the front loop of the next two stitches. Yarn over, draw through, and then yarn over, and then draw through both loops on your hook. Now, for this specific pattern, um, I really wanted to make uh, a really subtle uh, curve where his nose is. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it does uh, do a bit of a curve out. And then if I want to curve it in sharply, what I do is I put two decreases right next to each other. So I just made a decrease. I'm going to do one more decrease right beside it. And then what that does is it will sharply pull in 
um, the area that I want to form the snout. You'll see it a little better in the finished piece, but uh, do you see how it uh, curves out really sharply and then it's just going to come in really sharply as well. Um, to answer your question, Melville, I think, I think I get inspiration, mm, uh, I, I think, yeah, maybe inspiration's not quite the right word, um, I, I have a, an appreciation for, uh, what other people do for their art, um, I, I can't draw all that well, so, um, I love being, uh, seeing people who uh, draw for a living and then uh, do really, really awesome prints. Um, I've, I've been able to sit beside some really cool artists where uh, we'll, trade our, um, we'll trade our respective um, products. So I'll always come home, um, you know, having traded a lot of my amigurumi for some really, really cool print art. Very cool, Winrose. Um, Pikachu was the very, very first thing uh, that I crocheted. Um, so, yeah, Pokemon and Pikachu, uh, they, they hold a special part uh, in my uh, heart. Uh, so fun fact, I also, um, before I started crocheting, I was a knitter. Um, so I started knitting uh, back in my senior, hair, senior year of high school. Um, and uh, like, it, it was fun, it was enjoyable, I was really creative for a little bit, but after a while I kind of got sick of making just like beanies and scarves and shawls. So uh, I knew I wanted to make stuffed animals. And I don't know if anyone's ever tried to knit a stuffed animal. Uh, it is just so much work and it's so difficult. So uh, I transitioned over to crochet and I have rarely looked back since. I'll still knit some things here and there, like say if I want to make a sweater or something, but crocheting is, uh, crocheting is where it's at for me. All right, so um, I've decreased and I'm down to 12 stitches. So what I'm gonna do before I actually close it is I'm gonna insert the eyes um, just before I close this piece and I can't reach them. So for the eyes, uh, I'm using eight millimeter safety eyes. And then I've got a little circle template that I cut out of uh, uh, paper. So um, I cut out one eye already, so I'm just gonna use that same template. And then here's where those super sharp scissors come in really handy. Um, I'm just gonna cut out another piece of white felt from my template.
Just gonna concentrate a little bit just to make sure my lines are nice. Trim things up a bit. Okay, and then from here, I'm just gonna put one on top of the other. Um, and we're gonna need to poke a hole just uh, near the middle, um, just so that we can insert the safety eyes through it. So right around there. Okay, and then we'll just insert these ATIs right through. Cool. So now, um, on the head, I'm just going to count nine rows from the top. So from the magic ring at the very top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to place the eyes right below row nine and i'm just going to insert it and then i'll play around with the positioning after i've got them both in um, you want them to be about eight stitches apart as well so let's see one two three four five six seven eight let's see right around there okay and then you know what one more Sometimes this is the trickiest part, just gonna try and make sure everything's symmetrical. Cool, I think I'm happy with that. So now we'll put the backings in. Yeah, Lizzie, I'll, uh, I'll do more of these lives. Um, this is my first one, so I was just trying to figure out if I could even do it, um, lots of technical stuff that I'm uh, that I am learning. But it'll be nice because I'm off for the summer, so um, this these live streams will keep me busy. All right. Um, <clears throat> oh, I forgot some glue. I'll be right back. I just gotta grab uh, some white glue. All right, so any white glue will do. Um, I'm using uh, what's called tacky glue. Um, it's just uh, it's formulated for fabric and felt. I'm just gonna glue the pieces down. Just a few dabs here and there. You don't need to go overboard. Yeah, Pikachu is a great project to start with. Are you gonna make a chunky Pikachu where it's all done in one piece? Or are you gonna do the head and the body separately? Alright, I'm gonna let that dry off for a bit. Oops. Oops. 
Sorry. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm going to add a little bit of stuffing for now, and then I'll close off the piece. Okay, stuffing, um, we just use polyfill. Um, now, the pieces of felt that I cut out, um, I just like to use that as extra stuffing. That's not going to go to waste. Yeah, tacky glue. Um, it takes actually. Um, it, it dries pretty quickly. Um, I find it's pretty. It stays pretty secure. You don't need to keep reapplying it uh, a lot. All right. So stuff it. You just don't want to. You don't want to make it too. Oops, you don't want to stuff, overstuff it. Okay, so uh, the last row, all we got to do is just close this off with a few decreases. So I'm just going to keep using my invisible decrease. Where is everybody from? And what time is it where you guys are? It's almost noon uh, where I am, so it's almost lunchtime. Okay, so I just did a slip stitch to finish it off, and I'm just gonna add a bit more stuffing near the bottom. Oh, hello to uh, Argentina. That's awesome. England. Oh, it's now in the evening. Okay, so now we're going to close up this piece here. And again, everyone's got a different way of doing this. Um, here's how I do it. Um, I'm just going to insert my needle just into the front loops of the remaining stitches. I'll do like three-ish at a time. So just the front loops. Okay, and then once you've got a few of them, just pull tight, and then it'll give you a nice closed end. I just find that that makes things uh, the least messy. And then I'm just going to stuff the rest of this tail in. Cool, we've got people all over the world. This is awesome. Okay, so we've got our head. Doesn't quite look like Flick yet, but once we put these little eyelids on, uh, then we'll start to see it come together. So um, going back to the eyelids, uh, we've got the tail from the magic ring that we made. Uh, I'm just going to weave those in, just to kind of get them out of the way. So I'll just weave them right into the middle. A little tight. There we go. Just trim it a bit. Same with the other one. So I'm just weaving it randomly into the wrong side of the piece. There we go.
All right. So I'm just going to thread the needle with the eyelid tail. All right, so the way that we put on the eyelid is you can put it right over the piece of felt, and then now you can get that really cute disinterested look that Flick always has. Okay, and then I'm just going to make it slant uh, slightly. Um, so it's going to be the edge of the eyelid is going to be a little higher at the front of the eye than it is at the back of the eye. So very subtle but you just want to tilt it a little bit. And all I'm going to do is sew around the edge of the eyelid to the head. Sewing is always the trickiest, just because you want to make sure everything's going to be symmetrical. Um, sometimes I'll I'll sew something on, and then I'll just take it all apart again, just because it doesn't look quite right. So it's nice to be careful just to get it right the first time. All right, so we've made it to the other edge of the eyelid. All I'm going to do now is just uh, get rid of this tail. I'm just going to insert it into a stitch nearby. Come out just on the other side of the piece and then just tuck that little tail away. Cool, so there's one eyelid. So the other one on, just to make sure it's symmetrical. Start there, and again, you want to tilt it so it kind of slants downwards towards the back of the eye. Um, when I design Amigurumi, it depends on how excited I am to start that project. Um, with Flick, uh, so we did, or I was watching um, the cro Club Crochet um, live stream where he was where Louis was crocheting Gulliver, um, and there were a lot of suggestions for Flick. So that was on a Sunday, and then I was just super into the idea, so. I, I got it done on Tuesday, so it took me about two days to get the first prototype done. Um, sometimes if I'm super, super into a project, um, I can design it pretty quickly. Though it does take a lot, a, a big part of the day, um, I'd say around, uh, I don't know, five, five or six hours. To design an entire amigurumi. But again, the speed comes with experience. Um, I've been doing this for almost a decade now. So crocheting just sort of comes naturally to me. Um, and trying to visualize and imagine the shapes that I want to make. You know, again, that comes with uh, crocheting a lot. So 
why a lot of my inspiration comes from um, like animals uh, or <laughs> animals in video games. So uh, those shapes, uh, as long as I'm inspired by them, um, are pretty pretty easy for me to design a pattern around. Hi Pico, nice, nice of you to join. Don't worry about being late. Um, all, all we've got done so far is the head and the eyelids. Um, I'm gonna add your name to this list because I'm gonna do a little draw for a free flip pattern at the end of the video. Um, so whoever the winner is, I'll just uh, contact you, grab your email, and I can send you off a pattern. Cool. So we've got the eyelids on. There he is, looking very disinterested. Okay, so the next part, I think I'm going to work on the horns. So I need three of them. So the horns are really easy. Um, it's just a little finicky just because uh, you're crocheting with... Uh, you're crocheting the piece as just a single magic ring, so it gets a little bit tight. I'm just going to do a magic ring. And we're just going to single crochet five into that magic ring. All right, so we've got our magic ring. Uh, the next step is just to make a slip stitch, and then you're going to end off the piece, and then that is our horn. It's a really, really tiny piece. Okay, I'm going to just trim that. Okay, and then we're just going to pull on the magic ring tail really, really tight. And it's, it's really, really tiny, but it's going to make just a small little cone shape for the horn. So I did take the liberty of making all the horns beforehand, just so you didn't have to watch me make three little horns over and over and over again. Okay, and then uh, before we sew them on, um, that magic ring tail is just going to get in the way, so I'm just going to trim that. And just sort of tuck it into the horn a bit. And now we're going to sew them on. So I'm just going to use my original flick as a model. So we want two horns up at the top and then one horn right on the nose. I'm going to start on the nose. So, um, again, it's very, very subtle, but right where his nose curves outwards, I'm going to put the horn right at the tip. So, uh, for knitting, uh, I taught myself um, I just went to the library and I took out a book. Uh, YouTube didn't exist back then, um, so it was just me and a book and some uh, pretty terrible yarn um, that I was working with, because that's all I could afford back then. Um, and then crochet. Uh, so my best friend um, from high school, she, she crocheted. Um, so she taught me how to make like a few flowers here and there. Um, but then when I started crocheting, it was pretty much just uh, uh, learning on my own. Again, just uh, got the book from the library, just uh, went to town. And 
And I've just been crocheting a ton ever since. I haven't stopped. Oh, um, and another thing, uh, just kind of a tip that um, uh, you might find useful. When I sew, um, I don't pick up an entire stitch, so I'm not inserting my hook. Uh, I'm not inserting my needle into the entire stitch. All I'm doing is I'm just picking up like a single thread. So I'm picking up a single loop um, on the on the piece. I find it makes it a little more accurate, a little less bulky as well. So I'll show you again. Um, again, I'm not going through an entire stitch. I'm just picking up like a nearby loop. So just like one strand of yarn on the head. Yeah, everyone crochets so differently. Everyone has their own techniques for doing things. Um, just because I like my work uh, to be super clean, um, I found that picking up a single strand um, makes things look a little less bulky. Okay, we got one horn down. And then we're gonna do two more. One white right above each eyebrow. Cool. And again, we want to make sure everything's gonna be symmetrical in the end, so we'll take things a little slowly. Sorry, I've got a fly buzzing around my house and it just won't go away. My cat loves to try and catch flies, um, but he he's just napping right now. He could care less. Oh, that'd be perfect if we could just come to life and catch this stupid fly. So is anyone crocheting while they're watching? Since the pandemic started, um, I found myself watching a few more streams, um, just of uh, different different artists doing their doing their craft. Um, there's something soothing about. Um, you know, watching someone else create while I'm also just sitting there crocheting. Oh, the Lemmings games. I was never great at them, but I remember playing them on my uh, SNES. Um, my favorite special visitor in New Horizons, um, I mean, Flick is definitely up there, um, but I do, he's only visited once, but I really, really like Gullivar, um, the pirate version of uh, Gulliver. I, I still don't quite understand what his deal is. Like, is he Gulliver? And he's just got split personalities. 
or is he just like a like a, a twin or a clone? I wish I wish there was a little more lore as to who Gullivar actually is. Oh yeah, Space Gulliver, when he would come and you'd have to fix his UFO. He's a weird one, but I, I do love Gulliver. Yeah, I would love to see like a, a day in a life vlog for Gulliver. <laughs> see what he gets up to. Oh, that's a really deep cut. I totally forgot that in the Wild World games, he was uh, a, like a space alien, astronaut, whatever he is. Yeah, uh, one of the big reasons I wanted to make this live stream is because Flick is definitely tricky. Um, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of parts, a lot of details, um, things that you want to try and get right. Okay, there he is. Or there the horns are. He's not quite done yet. So uh, next, it's again very subtle, but uh, he's got these um, little markings for his eyebrows. So we're just gonna. Grab a tiny piece of yarn, a uh, brown yarn. I'm just gonna cut a little bit. And we're just gonna embroider um, just like a small little slanted line where his eyebrows are gonna be. So the way I do it, I'll insert it through the back of the head and then come out where I want the front of the eyelid to be. So right around there would be good. It's right below the horn. And then I'll pull it and leave like a pretty generous tail at the back. And then I'll slant it up a little bit just and the just to where I want it to end is where I'll insert the needle again. And then this time I'll insert it through the front. Okay, looks good to me. Oops, a little stuff came up. Okay, and then if you're happy with where the eyebrows are, now we just stuff in those tails. And then, uh, usually a lot of people are scared that it's going to come apart, but I find um, once once you've gotten in there and you pull it tight, um, it's, it's pretty secure. It's not going to come out until you know, someone's actually purposely trying to rip them out. There, just a little eyebrow. We'll do one on the other side as well. Uh, to answer your question, Lizzie, I, yes, I play a lot of video games, um, and what I design usually just comes from, like, I don't plan anything, it's just whatever I'm super uh, into at the moment. Um, so when I'm playing a lot of Pokemon, I'll design a lot of Pokemon. Um, I've been playing so much Animal Crossing, so that's, that's the, uh, that's the, my, that's my com content for the last few months, it's just been Animal Crossing. Uh, but um, I did recently get Paper Mario, the Origami King, um, and uh, oh, I do want to make a cute little Mario in the style of Paper Mario. I just find that art style so endearing.
Cool. I just got two cute little eyebrows. Okay, flick is the <laughs> most detailed part of this pattern. So that's why it's taking so long. Okay, so <clears throat> last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make these four spikes. They're all different sizes. And then the second spike has these little earrings on them. So back to the cherry colored yarn. So we'll start with the biggest spike first. So magic ring. Sorry, clear things out a little bit. So we'll do a magic ring of six. And then I want to increase to nine, so I'm going to do single crochet one and then increase. Oh, Melville, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, I, my cat, um, so my parents have a cat, and that's that was my first pet, um, but he's still kicking. And then my current cat, um, he's he's still a he's still a spry little guy, but. Um, I've never had to experience a death of a pet. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it. But uh, that's so cool that uh, Animal Crossing has a character that reminds you of your little dog. Um, my favorite villager right now, there are there's so many. Um, it's really hard to choose. Um, I do, I have Stitches. He's like a little bear um, that's just like made up of like random pieces of fabric. Um, I think he's my favorite right now. But I, <laughs> I love them all. I know these are just like little digital characters that don't actually exist. But um, each of my villagers, I make sure I say hi and give them a present every day. That's how obsessed I am with this game. All right, and then we just got one last row here for the first spike. And then we're just gonna finish things off with a slip stitch. And there's our first spike. Okay, and the next one is going to be a slightly smaller one. Oh, Melville, you are so lucky. Um, I do, even though Raymond is very popular and he's like super mainstream, everyone loves him, I just think he's so cute and I want him to come to my island. I had Judy visit my campsite once and I had no idea she was so rare and so special. Um, but I didn't invite her because she wanted to kick out one of my favorite villagers. Um, so I said no to her offer to come to my island. And uh, I've been regretting it ever since because I didn't realize she was so popular.
Okay, we are almost done this second spike. Okay, we'll finish off with a slip stitch. We're done with that guy. Third spike. So this one's a little smaller. Uh, we're just gonna do magic ring with five stitches. Okay, and then the next row, we're just going to single crochet four and then increase. So with the smaller magic ring, stitches are super close together, super tight. So just uh, take your time with them. And then we'll just invert it to make it cone-ish. And then finish with the slip stitch. Okay, and then our last spike. This is just gonna be a single crochet five into a magic ring. So again, a really, really small piece to work into. Okay, pull the ring tight, and then we're just gonna do a slip stitch into that first stitch again, just to close it off. And then we've got our final spike. So um, I'm going to give my hands a bit of a break. Um, we're going to do our draw for the furry pattern. So uh, just give me a second. I'm just going to cut out these names, and then we're just going to draw them out of a bowl. So I'm going to some bigger scissors. And then um, I'll draw your names out of a, at random, from a bowl. Um, and then whoever the winner is, I'm just going to get your email. I'm going to grab your email somehow. I don't know, can you can you do a direct message on YouTube? Well, if not, um, we'll figure out a way. So you'll get a flick pattern. But if you do have the flip pattern already, then I'll let you choose a different pattern from my Etsy shop. Okay, so we've got Cherry Sweet. Uh, hopefully you're still in the chat. If not, I'll uh, find a way to contact you afterwards. Yeah, I, I've never had to direct message anyone on YouTube, but if you can't do it anymore, I'll figure out a way to contact the winner. Whoops. Um, so I'm just going to go grab a hat or a bowl or something. I'll be right back. Uh, 
Um, oh, yeah, what? Here we go. Cool. So, I'm toss all these names into a bowl. Okay, and we're just going to choose it at random. Oh, Andrea, I did not see you. Yes, you can totally participate. I'm just going to write your name in. Andrea. Yeah, the winner, if you're not currently in the chat, I'll just get you to DM me on Instagram, your email. All right. Um, yeah, I can do another live stream sometime next week, um, just to crochet a few of the other pieces and then put them all together. You know what? I think I'm feeling nice. I'm going to do two winners. So the first one, sorry, I'm not looking. First one is Alex McGoran. So uh, just say hi if you're still in the chat. If not, I will contact you later. And then our second winner. Windrose. So congratulations. Um, I will be sending you to a free flip pattern. So, um, let's see. Cool. Uh, you guys are here. So, um, I'm not sure if you can DM on YouTube. Um, I'm going to put my Instagram... You know what? I'm going to put my email into the chat. Um, so, Alex and Windrose, uh, please just uh, email me and then I can reply with a free pattern. Cool. So, there is my email. Just uh, send me a quick email and then I will have those sent out soon after this live stream. Congrats to you two. All right. Uh, oh, no more crocheting. I'm just going to sew on these little spikes. So we're going to start with the biggest spike first. Uh, we're just going to lightly stuff it. Okay, and then uh, just our original model here. Um, that top spike, um, it's just slightly behind the uh, magic ring on the head. It's right around there. Can you want it right in the middle? So just be really careful when you're sewing it.
So there is a lot of sewing to this piece. Um, like I said, the head is the most detailed part of this. Um, the rest of the the rest of the body parts aren't too bad. Okay, uh, there's my first spike. Now the second spike. Uh, we're just gonna lightly stuff it again. Thread this needle. And now we're just going to sew it um, right below that first spike. So right next to it. Almost there. Again, I'm just trying to be careful just because I don't want to have to undo it later if I'm not happy with it. Almost done the second one. Okay, the third one. So this second smallest piece. I have a little tail in there. Okay, and again, this one goes right below the spike above it. Oh, almost done. One more spike.
Um, my summer break goes uh, until the end of August. Um, so uh, I don't know if it's different where you guys are, but for high school uh, in Canada, or in the province of Canada where I'm from, um, our summer starts in July, and then it starts, uh, school starts up again, um, uh, September, like that first week of September, um, but I have to go back to work just for some planning, um, just in that last week of August. Although, I'm not quite sure what my, <clears throat> uh, school year is going to look like just yet, um, just, uh, with all the safety precautions and such. Just not sure <laughs> how my classroom is going to look, um, if I have to worry about having to space out all my students. Our class sizes are pretty big, so um, I don't know. My, and my classroom's pretty small. It, it's, it's tough even getting like 30 kids in my classroom. So, and they're definitely not uh, two meters apart. So, um, yeah, well, we're going to see how, how we're going to keep things safe at school. Oh man, okay, so after all that sewing, we now have all the spikes on, and then we just have one more little detail to finish off the head, and I'm going to need some gray yarn. Again, you don't need very much, uh, I'm just going to cut off a strand of gray, and we just want to make two little loops as like... Uh, I don't know, earrings, spike earrings. Um, so it's just two little loops uh, just on his second spike. So the way that I'm going to do it, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to poke through the top of the spike. And I'll poke through where I want the first earring to start. Right around there. Okay, and again, we'll leave a bit of a tail. We'll stuff that in later. Okay, and then I'm just going to loop it around and then reinsert it on the other side of the spike. And then now, when I come out, I'm going to come out right above uh, the first entry point. Okay, and I'll do the same. I'm just going to loop it over to the other side of the spike. And then I'll make the exit point up here. Cool. And then just uh, two little loops. Pretty happy with how those look. So now I just stuff in these tails and tuck them away. And again, this should be pretty secure. Um, they'll only come out if someone's actually trying to pick them out. Oh, UK only gets six weeks? We get a full eight weeks, so it's super nice during the summer. Just to recuperate after ten months of dealing with teenagers. Cool. 
Um, so we finished the head. So he's got those uh, uh, little eyelids. He's got three horns, little eyebrows, and then all of those spikes. So when you're crocheting your own flick, uh, this is going to take the most amount of time. So uh, again, just be patient, take your time with it, especially when you're sewing. Um, make sure everything's symmetrical, um, and then just sew slowly. There's no need to rush through it. Um, that was my goal for today's live stream. So uh, thank you to everyone who did join, and congrats to Alex and Winrose. Um, I'm going to type in my email just one more time. If you haven't emailed me yet, um, just uh, shoot me off a quick email, and I'm going to reply with your uh, flip pattern. Cool. Um, Sometime next week, I, I haven't decided when. I'm not sure which day I'm free, but I will uh, do another live stream where we'll uh, take care of the rest of Flick. Um, so there's a few more parts to do. Uh, you've got his body, you've got his two arms, uh, his legs and the tail. Um, those, are, those are a little more straightforward than the, uh, than the head is. Um, so I'll do that in a future live stream. Thank you, thank you again for joining. Um, <laughs> I was a little nervous, but uh, everyone's super, super nice. Um, it was nice chatting with everyone. Nice meeting some uh, new people as well. Um, to those of you in the UK, have a good evening. And then for those of you uh, in North America, uh, and uh, we've got a few people from Argentina as well, um, have a good rest of your day. Okay, bye everyone.